Hello and welcome to MIT Prime Primetime News. I am Teresa Adeyemi. We begin the primetime news tonight with the top stories. Workers worldwide celebrate Labor Day. We'll go on a quick break. After this break, we'll be back. Mommy, it is time for us to leave this old place. One of your errands is missing. No one will find it. I'm not willing to take that chance. I have a big plan, man. What do you want? I want your senior position at the bar. If anything happens to me, go through the content of this envelope and check everything you think. It's done. No one will ever find out the truth. They are real. They are the drama queens of Abuja. If you're not real, you will be consumed, okay? Stop calling me the mom joke. You have an intruder in the house. The meter with this place is rising. You're old. What's that I need deliverance? Ha! Deliverance! It wasn't me. Oh, she called me on the mm hmm. Wasn't it? I had to me aside for a chat. No, no, no. The real housewives of Abuja, only on Showmax. To watch this and other Showmax originals, simply add Showmax to your DSTV subscription using the My DSTV app. Welcome back. Uh, it's Prime Primetime News, and I am Teresa Ateyemi. Uh, we'll begin the news tonight with the top stories. Workers worldwide celebrate Labor Day. President Buhari tax incoming government to respect workers' rights. And from the foreign scene tonight, Russia launches second pre-dawn missile attack in Ukraine. From the world of sport, Atete vows to continue Arsenal fight for Premier League title. Now the news in details. President Muhammad Buhari has urged the incoming administration to continue to respect workers' rights and maintain a sound national industrial relations system to enhance socio-economic development. President Buhari, who was represented by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Bas Mustafa, disclosed this while delivering a speech on Monday in commemoration of the 2023 Workers' Day in Abuja with the theme, Workers' Rights and Socio-Economic Justice. He emphasized the need for the government to create a decent and fair economic structure targeted at creating opportunities to enhance productivity. The Minister of Labor, Chris Ingege, while giving his address, restated the commitment of the Ministry of Labor to providing a secure working environment for workers through institutionalizing suitable minimum wage for the workers. The President of the Nigerian Labour Congress, NLC, Comrade Joe Ajairo, and the Trade Union Congress, GUC, Comrade Festus Osifo, while expressing deep concern over the pity of the state of workers in Nigeria, lamented the government's insensitivity to the plight of workers. The union therefore called on the federal government to address the niggling issues affecting workers across all sectors decisively and urgently. Lending their voices, Nigerian workers lamented over unfair labor practices like casualization and non-payment of minimum wage by some state government and private companies, urging the incoming government to address the worsening poverty, insecurity, unemployment, inflation, high cost of living, and frustration in the nation. Here in Lagos, the state governor, Babaji de Sonwolu, on Monday said his administration has paid 51.7 billion naira to pensioners in the state. 
is for the 2023 Workers' Day celebration themed Workers' Rights and Social Economic Justice held at Mubolaji Johnson Arena Unikon, Lagos. It reaffirmed this administration's unwavering commitment to the welfare and working conditions of the workers in the state as government is not mindful of the challenges of the time. So Wolubu was represented at the occasion by the Deputy Governor, Dr. Kadiri Obafemi Abzad, added that the government remained committed to resolving all outstanding issues affecting the welfare and service entitlement of all workers in the state. He added that, given, he added that and I quote, given our commitment and disposition to meeting workers and labor's requested matters of welfare and security, we will go down in history as one of the best workers friendly administration in the state. In a related development, workers in Ogun State have joined their counterpart globally to celebrate the workers there with a call on government to improve their welfare package. The workers gave their demands after a match pass at the MKO Stadium, Kuto Abel Kuta, the state capital with state governor, Dakwa Biodu in attendance. The workers who spoke through the organized labor, which consists Nigerian Labor Congress, NLC, and Trade Union Congress, TUC, urged the government to fulfill agreement in memorandum understanding signed with them. And as response, Governor Dakwa Abiodu assured them that they will honor all agreement reached with them, announcing increment of minimum pension to 10,000 naira. to our serving colleagues and retirees. We are sure it is just a matter of time as we shall continue to engage the government for more positive impacts. Comrades, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. On behalf of the entire workforce of our dear gateway state, by drawing your attention and put more effort in the area of funding of education sector in general, this includes but not limited to instructional and infrastructural development vis-a-vis -vis human capacity building and welfare of teachers. Great teachers, yeah. development of agricultural sector, particularly in the area of training, creating an enabling environment to ensure farmers have opportunity to affordable soft loan, provision of modern farming equipment to farmers through agro service, seeds corporation, and other relevant agency at subsidiary to enable farmers have a, at the grassroots to have access to their use. I must state that with all sense of responsibility, that we understand the plight of our workers, and that is why we have remained unwaveringly committed to improving the welfare of our workforce and the populace. We will continue to execute people friendly policies and programs that will further make positive impact in the lives of our people through efficient and faithful implementation of our Ishaya mantra. See you soon next. As workers across Nigeria match this year's Workers' Day celebration, uh, your state governor, Sheyi Makende, has assured this government will continue to prioritize the improvement of the condition of service for workers in the state to ensure greater productivity. Governor Makende will express gratitude to the workforce stated this in his address at colorful occasion held at the Lake Salami Stadium at Damasimba in Ibadan. Acknowledge the commitment and support of the state labor force, which has translated to economic sources under its administration. It highlighted some of the specific areas the state is looking forward to for global investment drive to include agribusiness, solid minerals, renewable energy, and tourism. Leaders of the Nigerian Labor Congress, Kayode Matis and Bosun Olabi of the Trade Union Congress, TUC, expressed gratitude to Governor Makide for placing high premium on workers' welfare and well being in the state. Osho State Governor Ademola Adeleke has promised to continue improving the welfare and working conditions of workers in the state. Governor Adeleke stated at the 2023 Workers' Day celebration held at the Oshobo City Stadium in the state capital. While speaking, Governor Ademola Adeleke appreciated 
the workers in the state for their hard work, resilience, and productivity. The governor reeled out his achievement in the last few months and promised to continue prioritizing the welfare of workers in the state. On his path, the state chairman of Trade Union Congress, Adekola Adebowale, lauded the governor for the sustenance of workers' salaries and other welfare packages. Also speaking, the chairperson caretaker committee, Nigerian Labour Congress in the state, Mudukwe Ola Oyedele, noted that workers in the state will remain productive and committed to carrying out their duties using the opportunity to ask for more from the governor. As Ekata State workers joined the rest of Nigeria to celebrate this year May Day, workers in the state have chosen the theme, Worker Rights and Social Economic Justice. According to the State Chairman of the Trade Union Congress, TUC, Shola Adigun, and the State Chairman of Nigeria's Labour Congress, NLC, Kolako Olatunde, government at all levels must urgently provide palliative to caution the effect of the inflationary trend in the economy, which has eroded the value of the national minimum wage as a result of the hike in the prices of petroleum and other domestic product. Meanwhile, the state governor of Ikita State, Biodu Uyepanji, while addressing the workers, stated that the government will continue to prioritize the welfare of workers in the state, including those who retired from the active service for their commitment and as a demonstration of government's commitment to their welfare. Away from Workers' Day celebration, the Joint Admission and Matriculation Board Champ has stated that it will begin to release results of the Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination on Tuesday, May 2, 2023. As contained in a statement issued on Monday about the examination board, the result was sequel to an emergency management meeting held over the weekend in Abuja at the board's headquarters. Jam noted that the delay in the results of the release of results was due to the fact that it wanted to ensure that all necessary screenings were concluded. Similarly, the examination body also noted that three categories of candidates who missed their examination had been rescheduled for mop-up examinations. The Lagos State Government has been called upon to take proactive steps and respond swiftly in curbing activities of land grabbers, which has caused death in Ujomo community of Ajiro land in the Etiosa local government area of the state. The president of Center for Human and Social Economic Rights, Alex Omotenshi, who gave the charge while speaking with newsmen in Lagos, wondered why the state government has so far kept silent on the complaint of unrest in Ajira community, which has led to the murder of a son of a late Bashono of Ajira Sheriff Salami. Omotain she called on the state governor of Abajide Sanwolu on swift protection of legitimate authority of traditional institution in Ajira land against further intimidation and insubordination by land grabbers. If further call for approval of the gruesome murder of Sheriff Salami on the 18th of April 2023 as a result of unrest brought to the community by land grabbers. If action is not taken by the state government, that little thing you are seeing happening in that community that people are overlooking may result to anarchy because it had get to a stage where people have been banished from the community by this element, our position is very clear. Not any other thing than to, to bring sanity to the society and peaceful coexistence among uh, residents and neighborhood. If one person was killed over land matter, it concerns us. We need to speak out. We don't want to wait until half a dozen persons are killed. We don't want to wait until it is the time for me to buy land in Lekki and it to be taken over, I can't have possession. That is why we are soliciting. Most critical factor of productivity, which is land, becomes you know, uh, you know, an item that is controlled by non-state actors, vagabonds, criminals, who masquerade as land grabbers and nomonile. It is on this basis that we are calling out of the Babajide Sohulu to end his continuous silence on this matter and ensure that the states come out with a deliberate position.
And that's all from the local scene tonight. We'll go on a quick break to bring you a report from the foreign scene. Please stay with us. Mom, it is time for us to leave this old place. One of your errands is missing. No one will find it. I'm not willing to take that chance. I have a big plan, man. What do you want? I want your senior position at the bar. If anything happens to me, go through the content of this envelope and check every single thing. It's done. No one will ever find out the truth. You're still watching MITV Primetime News now to Foreign Stories. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres has sent his emergency relief chief to Sudan amid the unprecedented situation as the country's warring factions continue to fight as but saying they would extend a barely respected 72 hours ceasefire that ended at midnight on Sunday. Guterres wrote on Twitter as he announced his decision that the scale and speed of what is unfolding in Sudan is unprecedented in the country, pointing out that in light of the rapidly deteriorating humanitarian crisis, it was sending at UN relief chief that is Martin Griffiths to the region immediately. In a separate statement, Griffiths said that Sudan... Al-Burhan, Al-Kabashi and Atta. They are all responsible for the war and allowing prisoners out. They have turned the country into a playground for proxy militias. As violence surges, a trip to the grocery has become fraught with danger. Looters roam the streets. Armed militias are constantly on the move. The in Sudan is not only putting that country's future at risk, it's, a lighting, it's lighting a fuse that could detonate across borders, Caused immense suffering for, causing immense suffering for years and setting development back for decades. Excellencies. The Russia has launched a series of missiles at Ukrainian cities in the second pre-dawn attack in three days with Pavorad, a logistic hub near the central city of Dnipro, hit ahead of a much anticipated counter-offensive by Ukraine. The strike sparked a major fire, destroyed dozens of houses and wounded 34 people. Hours later, the air raid alert sounded across the country with the capital cave among the target. Across the country, the Ukrainian army said it shot down 15 of the 18 cruise missiles that had been fired. Meanwhile, Ukraine says its air defenses have destroyed 15 of 18 missiles launched by Russian forces as Moscow has intensified attacks on its neighbor in recent days. Commander-in-Chief of the Air Forces, Valery Zaluzhny, said on his Telegram channel that around 2.30 a.m. on Monday, the Russian invaders attacked Ukraine from strategic aviation planes. No civilian casualties or destruction of residential buildings or infrastructure were immediately recorded. All missiles directed at Ukraine's capital were destroyed in what the site was the second attack on Kiev in three days.
And up next is part related stories. Please stay with us. Um, it is time for us to leave this old place. One of your errands is missing. No one will find it. I'm not willing to take that chance. Uh, have a big plan, man. What do you want? I want to send your position out of my. If anything happens to me, go through the content of this envelope and check everything within it. It's done. No one will ever find out the truth. Welcome back. Talk and sport. Asna are still fired up after the defeat by rivals Manchester City. Manager Mikel Arteta said, but added that the side clearly need to improve if they hope to keep their Premier League title hopes alive with a win over Chelsea on Tuesday. Asna have relinquished their lead at the top of the standing following a round of four games without victory, including the 4 1 defeat by City in draws with Liverpool, West Ham United, and Southampton. As now in the second place on 75 points, 1B and leader cities will have a game in hand. Asked about the title race, Ateta told reporters there is still work to do. Barcelona's hope of signing Lionel Messi and registering Gabi have reportedly taken a blow after seeing financial restructuring plans rejected. The Catalan giants have been experiencing well-documented monetary struggles with those issuing contributing to what seven-time Ballon d'Or winner Messi, leaving the club as a free agent in 2021. Baca had hoped that La Liga would work with them to help balance the books at Camp Nou. Reports, however, claims that La Liga rejected Baca's initial feasibility plan that was intended to see them spread cost-cutting measures across three years. And in tennis, world number one Iga Swate claimed she had endured, endured a tricky day despite easing to a straight set win over American left hander Bernada Perry to reach the last 16 of the women's tournament in the Spanish capital. Women up for the defense of a French Open title, Swate claimed the 6 3 6 2 win for a sixth consecutive victory and play this season. Swate has faces assistant seed Ekaterina Alexandrova. We came from a set down to see of Zheng Kuiwen of China. Also progressing to the fourth round was world number three, Jessica Pegula, who clinched a grueling 6-4-7-6-7-2 victory over Mari Boskova of the Czech Republic. And that's it on the news tonight, but before we go, a quick recap of our top stories. Workers worldwide celebrate Labor Day. President Buhari tax income and government to respect workers' rights. And from the foreign team, we told you that Russia launches second freedom missile attack in Ukraine. From the exciting world of sports, Atete vows to continue as the fight for Premier League title. And that's it on the news tonight. I am Teresa Atteyemi. Do have a great night. Good night.